Welcome to Projection Mapping Basics. Today we are looking at picking a projector. So what are we going to cover? We're going to look at short throws, the throw calculator, looking at lumens and what they are, resolution, stacking and stitching, and the most commonly used brands and models. And then we're going to look at outdoor rated ones and should you purchase used or new. And it's a final reminder to just stay away from those LED ones at this point because you get what you pay for. If it's a hundred bucks, it's not great. And it definitely won't do projection mapping. So let's take a look at your projector first. What is a short throw projector? Um, so to find out what a short throw projector is, let's go to the original guys, the long throw. These are those old school ones that you will find out there and um, especially in the used categories. These were the ones that you saw back in the schools in the 90s. They will totally work, okay, if you have the distance. You have to pull it back to get it to cover the house. So, um, for instance, if I have to go back 30 feet with my short throw from my house to cover it for my long throw, I'm really looking at probably going back 60 feet. It makes a huge difference. So if you have that space, then go for it. If your house isn't long, then go for, for it because it will work. Watch out for obstructions because you're going back so far. If you have anything, and I really mean anything, uh, it could be a tree, it could be a bush or um, a flagpole or anything. It could be even a trick or treater walking by. Uh, those obstructions will show up as shadows on your house. The nice thing about long throws are they are cheaper. So because the short throws are cheaper, you can usually get higher lumens, which are like more powerful ones um, for a cheaper price than you would getting a short throw. So let's take a look at the short throw. The throw ratio is usually between 0.4 and one. Since it is closer, you have less obstructions. So if you have trees in your front yard, having that short throw, getting that projector closer to the house, most likely means that you're going to be dodging some of those trees in there. You definitely have to watch the heat. The short throw processors take your data that's coming through and then they compute it and change it into a format which allows them to throw it in a shorter distance. So that creates a lot of heat. So just make sure with your short throw that you have it um, in an environment where it can breathe and stay cool. Here is the next type, and this is ultra short throw. And you, you would initially think, well, if short throws are better than long throws, then ultra short throws would be even better. You would think that, but it's not the case. If you are using it in your basement or living room, that's awesome because you can put it right in front of the wall within a foot and it, you'll have this huge screen right there. But the angles are awful. So because of that very steep throw, it will create really awful shadows on your house and it will not cover the way that you want it to. Things will be blurred on the outside once you get too far back. It just will not work. So avoid the ultra short throws. Even though you think it's gonna be better, it really is not. There's also a max distance from the screen. Um, which I kind of mentioned, and that max distance from the screen, what I was looking was close to two feet for the majority of them. So just, um, actually less than two feet. So just to keep in mind uh, that ultra short throws are not the way to go. So how do you, how do you know what you need? Projectorcentral.com, and I have the website right up there for you is an amazing resource. They have a throw calculator. This throw calculator can be used 
to figure out how far your projector is going to need to be from your house. So what you will do is when you go to projectorcentral.com and you click on their throw calculator, you're going to put in your projector that you have, the model or the projector that you are looking at. You're going to have to measure the front of your house. So the image size. So I went with 55 feet and that's my width. And then it will tell you your throw distance. And this is how far back your projector is going to need to be from your house. So once you put all of that in there, this gives you a huge um, or a huge step forward in knowing what you're going to need to do as far as placement. So go to this throw calculator, use it, put in your projector, make sure you have the face of your house measured, um, more so the width than the height. The height is almost never neat or always over top from what I've seen. Um, so use that width and then it will tell you the throw distance and then measure yourself out in the yard and you'll see exactly where you're going to work with. Lumens. This is the most important part when you're really thinking about the projector. We have things called ANSI lumens. So that is a um, rating on the brightness of the image. There, uh, look it up online. I'm not going to get into exactly how they do the ANSI lumens, um, but that is the rating that you will base your purchase off of. Remember, we're looking for at least 3,500 or more. Uh, many people are very successful right at that 3,500 to 4,500 lumens. You can go up, but you don't really need to. Now, when you go to do your searching, you're going to find some projectors that are LED projectors and they will claim obnoxious stuff. Like the one that I saw tonight was 9,000 lumens and they had Lux lumens there, 9,000. And the projector was the size of my hand and $99. <laughs> there is no way that that's going to happen. However, because of the way that they are measuring the lumens, still using the word lumens, but it's a different process, uh, they are um, re sending it out there, which is a huge way that they are throwing off the buyers. So just beware of those LED claims it is most likely too good to be true. Now, if you're using them for just the pumpkins, that's really close, then they'll work, okay? But if you're using them to project your map, make sure you are reading the ANSI lumens. The more ambient light that you have, ambient light is the light that's around. So if your house is gen generally very dark, or if there's going to be like a full moon around, and that is that ambient light. More importantly, we're talking about the front yard lights or street lamps or the lights that you have at your front door. All of that light will pull back from your, your image. So please make sure that you try to reduce the ambient light as much as possible. But if you can't, then you need to bump up your lumens. Instead of having that that bottom end of 3,500, you're going to need like a bottom end of 4,000, okay, or more. Do you need to jump all the way up to the prosumer uh, projectors? No, okay. So you can go all the way up to 12,000 lumens, and depending on what group you are in, what Facebook group or who you ask. They're like, well, you're going to need at least 2,400 lumens or, and they come out and wheel their projectors out and have these crazy things. Sure. That's going to be awesome, but you're also not trying to light up the Disney castle. Okay. You're just doing it in your front yard where you have a little more control over your light. Uh, but if you have that money to just blow, go for it, right? Send, send me a video because I want to see it. I'm sure it's going to be awesome but you're going to be perfectly all right with 3,500 to 4,500. 
resolution. <clears throat> so that's the viewing space, okay? Um, so think about your view, view, sorry, resolution is not viewing space. Resolution is the like uh, little individual pixels, how tight your image gets. Think about it from your viewing space though. If your viewing space is far from the yard, like mine, far from the house, like mine is, you can, that really helps hide those lower resolutions. If you're going to have trick-or-treaters coming up a little bit closer, then you're going to want to have a higher resolution. 1080p, that's a good balance of clarity and price. That's right where I'm at, and I love it. It's exactly what I need. I did... Um, initially look at doing 4k as I was making my latest uh, projector purchase and that would be awesome but the it was very cost um, costly should I say at that point and at, at that point it would be more for me than anybody else um, but if you can go for it it's going to be awesome 720p that's what I started with and it was workable but I'll tell you what you definitely lose the detail and you need to have that distance to try to hide that. When I went from 720p to 1080p, it was night and day. And I'm telling you, it was crazy. And I could tell is because I would set up my projector there. And as I would go to walk into the house, when you get up closer, you can see the little squares of the like pixel blocks there. Um, you, I could notice that the square was like almost like half, if not more, of the size. Um, so it definitely made a huge difference. Stacking and stitching. Uh, you'll hear about this. Stacking. That's when you mount two or more projectors and align their images. Usually the projectors are on top of each other within their housing. One's kind of pointed up a little, one's kind of pointed down a little, a little keystone, and um, it will overlap the images. And when you stack it, it allows for a much brighter show. So it will pay, play the same content in the same space. So think about it like you have two flashlights that are kind of dull. If you put one flashlight in one spot and the other flashlight, which is the same one pointing at the same spot, that spot's going to get brighter. It's that same idea. Is it going to be twice as bright? No, okay, but it will be brighter. Stitching. This is what you have to do when you have a longer space that you need to cover, like a longer house. Uh, so you will need to use more than one projector to cover that. And like it could be like the left side of the house, the right side of the house, and they'll be kind of stitched in the middle at like a natural seam or a little overlapping. Um, they place separate content that play together. So it will be coming in the left side and then go through the right side. So it will come in the left projector and then go out the right projector. You need extra hardware or planning to export those files and sync the video. There's a lot of different resources that are um, that you need to kind of get into, which I'm not going to get into in this video but definitely hit up those Facebook groups. Um, quite a few people do that. Here are the most commonly used projectors at this moment. The Optimas um, and the BenQs are the two big ones that I would say uh, that I see the most. The GT1080 HDR, which is 3,500 lumens. That's the one that I have and love. Uh, then immediately, I swear it was like immediately after I made the purchase, the 1090 came out, um, which is a laser style, and that is 4,200 lumens. And from what I hear, uh, people are really loving that projector. Uh, so kind of buyer's remorse because of the timing, but I still love my 1080. Then you have the EH412ST, lots of people with that one as well. That one comes in at 4,000 lumens. Um, I've heard some people um, say that have had both or have been around both that they say that it's very similar to the 1080. Uh, BenQ. 
Here are the two models, the MW826STH, short throw there, 3,500 lumens, the LWA20ST coming in at 3,600 lumens. Those are the ones that I see mentioned the most. Remember, these are all the most commonly used projectors in 2021. So outdoor rated projectors, there is one out there and that's the Luxedo projector coming in at a, a small $1,700, um, which honestly, you don't have to worry about the housing, which is pretty awesome. So that does kind of help with the price, but it's still super pricey, especially when you're thinking about the uh, 1090 coming in at I think it's 1400 right now um, so which you get a much more of a projector out of it uh, but anyway the Luxita projector that is out there coming in at $1,700 right now it is fully weatherproof uh, they say pretty or they said if you do not submerge it in water then you are good it will handle any weather that you throw at it it is 3,800 lumens, which is nothing to uh, spit at, right? It's right there where you need it to be, bright enough. But it is 1024 by 768 resolution, which is lower. That puts it down towards that 720p, so you're, um, it's definitely workable. It will be good, but if you're looking for a big impact, it's not there, especially when you're looking at that price tag, it is not uh, anywhere close. Um, it does have, it stated, a 5 to 50 foot distance. So that's the majority of houses, but I would, um, I know mine would be right outside of that window. Um, so just keep in mind that that is there as well. So this is incredibly promising. I was so super excited for that Luxita projector. I saw the price and I was like, oh, and then I was, you know, it could be worth it. And then I looked at some of the stats and that resolution really killed it for me. Uh, so it's promising, but for me, it's just not yet there. Uh, used versus new. New, obvious, it's new. <laughs> you can't get any better than that. Nobody was sitting there. You know the whole history of it. Uh, the bulb, you don't have to worry about. There's no hours on it. So no wear and tear. It's new. More expensive than the used. All right, so should you buy used? I said go for it. That was how I did my first projector uh, for my projector mapping because I didn't know if I wanted to waste all the money on a projector and then not use it. Like projector mapping is pretty in depth. It's not something that you just go into thinking you're going to just push a button and it's going to work. Uh, so used is really the way to go. It's cheaper right out of the gate. And because it's cheaper, you usually can get a better projector for uh, the price that you're willing to spend. Uh, when you're going to purchase used, look for the hours. And if they don't have the hours of usage on there, ask for it. Okay, it's, it's kind of a big deal. And right out of the gate, research the cost of a new bulb. And I honestly suggest just buying one. That's what I did with my first projector. I found it used. I saw the hours. They were a couple hundred. So I was like, you know what? I'm getting a new bulb. So I got the new bulb and I put it right in. It was like an extra, I think it was like a hundred bucks or something. Um, but it was a um, clear bulb that I knew was going to be bright and ready to run. This is my final reminder. You get what you pay for. If you're looking for like, especially something new, you're looking for some purchasing something new under 400 bucks new, you're not going to get um, a good projector. Okay. You're going to get what you pay for. If you go on and you're buying something, a projector for about 400 bucks used, uh, that's awesome but go off of what they retail for new, okay? Uh, also keep in mind the Lumen because they are totally beating you in there. 6,500 Lumens for $76? I think not, not happening. Uh, look at this guy, 9,500 Lux 
All right, so this is their trick there, thinking, making you think that it's going to be 9500 super bright, like triple uh, the brightness of some of the other ones that you see out there. It's not going to be for $200. Remember the difference between their ratings. Be very careful. Also, if, it can, if you can pinch it in your hand, it's not going to cover your house. So please remember you get what you pay for. Hit up those Facebook groups. Look at the commonly used ones. Look, Make sure it's ANSI Lumens, ANSI Lumens, um, to make sure that you're not throwing your money away. Reach out to me. Hit me up in the comments. Look at them down below. I answer all the questions that you put in there. If you're shy, go ahead, send me an email. I enjoy emails. Even if you're just saying, thanks for the videos, thanks for making this free, I appreciate it. If you want a one-to-one -one meeting with me, yeah, I'll do it definitely. Um, just with my time, I would charge just a little bit, nothing crazy, but uh, if you want like a, a time to just sit down and go over something with me in Zoom, share your computer screen, I'll walk you through, bring it on. Hit up the Facebook groups. Holiday projection mapping is the go-to group. I'm putting it right there. If you're looking for residential projection mapping, that is the group you want to join. Lots and lots of helpful people, and it is really um, admin well. Uh, you can also get a ton of people at the Atmos Effects Decorating Community Group. However, that group has a ton of people, but some are just shining some lights on some pumpkins, not their entire house. So if you're looking for a pro uh, projection mapping community, hit up that first Facebook group. As always, thank you for making it all the way through my video. Thank you for watching the video. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, notify, all that weird YouTube-y stuff. Go ahead and do that. It does help keep this free. Thank you, everybody.